Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi and good day everyone. So today I would like to present about my research. It is on zero energy architecture, practice of digitalization and alternative energy to building design. I am Samia Azi, uh, which is main author for the paper. Uh, I am Dr. Siti Mariam uh, and also Dr. Fairo will be co-author for the paper. I'm from UMK by the way. So my research outline today, or uh, content outline, will be about uh, abstract introduction, data analysis of zero architecture, alternative energy in Malaysia, and also digitalization construction. And I, I will end after that go for discussion, conclusion, and also references. Okay, if we look at uh, the abstract, climate change is forcing the globe undergo an energy transition which has accelerated the shift away from fossil fuels and toward clean energy. In this paper, the researchers analyze and provide the past and current information regarding alternative energy in Malaysia as well as the various renewable energy deployment for energy action building. The data collected through review of the literature by other authors which is it is second secondary data or sources about uh, renewable energy, energy efficient building and digitalization construction in Malaysia. The data review could be used by the policy maker, assisting the local government, enlightening building industry players and the public to highlight the significance to practice and equality sustainable framework with the taping of renewable energy and digitalization system for every planning that related to zero energy architecture, which is in short form we call as ZEA. For the keywords, uh, so it is uh, alternative and there, there are alternative energy, boring design, digitalization, construction, boring energy, and also zero architecture. We go for introduction. 39% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions are from buildings. That means emissions in buildings will be important to reaching net zero emissions by 2050 utilizing current affordable technology ef energy efficient zero carbon buildings improve, improve local communities health equity and economic development while lowering emissions this quoted by Nestle 2021 energy energy conservation through energy efficient building has become increasingly important because of the global energy crisis the three main factors that should be taken into consideration for energy savings in a building are building design, low energy building materials, use in building construction and the use of renewable energy technologies for various purposes. To ensure the world's long-term sustainability, renewable energy sources must be used to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Malaysia's government and private sectors have recently begun to implement green construction techniques partly to benefit from lower energy costs but also due, due, due to increased concern about the effects of the interior environment on well-being. Next, we look at to data analysis which is classified into three, of three, uh, three stages. Uh, so, it will be about zero architecture. Um, alternative energy and also digitalization construction in Malaysia. By the way, the topic reviews include energy crisis, alternative energy and barriers of alternative energy in Malaysia, energy action building and zero architecture, digitalization construction in Malaysia and government policies, and any alternative energy and digitalization construction in Malaysia. If we look at into zero energy architecture, uh, the first stage in designing a net zero energy building is to adhere to design standards since it is crucial to identify the sources and inputs needed to quantity uh, the outputs and determine what is required to balance the net energy use. The second stage is to model energy use using, use using a variety of tools and strategies to optimize the following building orientation, glazing area, exposure and shading, heat island reduction, lighting systems and capacities, temperatures, humidity and relative humidity levels, landscaping, natural resources and the overall system efficiency. So this is quoted by Shahadi 2020. If we look at into figure one shows this is figure one shows the net net zero village as an example of zero architecture model, zero energy architecture model that has been discussed by the researchers. So if we look at this uh, figure, it is display on uh, alternative energy uh, which is solar solar power and also 
uh, the wine turbine, maybe in the nearest area, and also the 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 the, the farm uh, close to the building. Yeah. A building is considered to be net zero site energy if if when measured on site it is produced um, as much energy as it used. In comparison to the energy content at the source, the net zero source energy building is one that annually produces as much energy as it consumes. The building that uses energy efficiency and renewable energy solution as part of the business model is known as a net zero energy cost building. To emphasize, net zero energy emission buildings are those who design consider the emissions generated by the structure's energy requirements. Various energy efficient me measures are displayed in figure 2. So this is figure 2. Here, uh, there is component uh, to to analyze the energy efficient in a building which is one of, I mean one one of them is bioclimatic design, insulated and a type building envelope, natural daylight efficient and efficient lighting, renewable energy, slow energy IT and appliances, efficient HVAC system as well. A more sustainable construction can lessen human effects on the environment in figure 3. So this is figure 3, this is result is display. So this is also quoted by Shadi 2020. So uh, there is an uh, effect on sustainable building on the environment by the way, uh, into social life and also economic development. So if we look at into environmental protection, uh, into climate change, use of renewables, uh, energy efficient and etc. So, so this is a few impact if we are, we are using uh, there's never buildings uh, into the environment. Alright, so basically, basically uh, figure, figure, figure 4 shows um, uh, net zero architecture as well, which is energy action building uh, using uh, the electricity produced by wind turbine and also solar panels. So if you look at into the wind turbine, it is generated, you know, uh, like the local area nearby the buildings or on-site renewables. And also, uh, the solar panel is installed uh, in the building, usually uh, at the rooftop. So, yeah. So, this is the way how uh, zero energy architecture uh, as researchers discuss. So, if we look at into the zero energy building, ZEV program is currently supported by the European Union, uh, EU, Japan, Singapore, and other countries committed to reducing energy use and carbon emissions. So, it is uh, as portrayed in Figure Six. So, this is Figure Six. How, how is the energy option building? Uh, I mean, uh, will be constructed or I mean, can be constructed as well. So, it is. Uh, I mean, they are. Well, there are three components uh, in energy efficient building, which is energy conservation, energy efficiency, and also renewable energy. So there is some uh, calculation to to uh, how I can say to to know uh, if the building it is uh, energy efficient or not. So this is uh, how, how the things should look like. All right. Um, that also entails the design of extremely energy efficient building mesh merged with renewable energy application. The majority of these nations aim to sustainable energy aim aim to sustainable energy development authorities say that. Which is uh, will be about new public buildings in the year uh the EB is released by twenty twenty and new public and private buildings on average uh the EB categories by twenty thirty. So one of Example of zero energy architecture, uh, so I display here and also I make it as example here. It is uh, the diamond building has been constructed and designed using a sustainable building concept, reduced use of fossil fuels, water conservation, use of sustainable building materials, waste mini minimization and avoidance in the environmental quality, traffic and transportation management, and construction and demolition management plan are some of the considerations, uh, which is uh, it is. The components of the, the diamond building. So uh, this is the detail uh, of the section of the, the diamond building. So if you look at here, there is the dome with it, which is this is more like atrium or a skylight, you know, uh, where uh, the natural light can go into the building by this uh, uh, courtyard or, or atrium, or maybe we can call it as uh, atrium. Sorry, you can call it as a, uh, how can I say, a courtyard as well, okay, but in a modern way. 
So innovation atrium, yeah, this is innovation atrium. And also space rooftop garden as well, no, in the in the building, uh, sloping roof for the photo wall pad here as well, for the solar panel. I mean, the, for the installation purpose, will be, you know, uh, at the outer scale of the building, 75 set, far set. Tall tree line, streetscape for shading and also cooling effect. So, yeah, this is here, you no, know, outside the building. Glass entrance, gonna be with, gonna be with water elements as well. And also, pedestrian walk outside the buildings. And uh, light shaft, low e glass where this is uh, the, the, the double glazing used by the buildings to to decrease uh, the 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 internal uh, temperature by the natural light. There are two examples for the green architecture building that I will be discussing in this conference, which is one of them is Green Energy Office Building, in short form GEO, Malaysian Green Technology and Climate Change Corporation, and another building uh, will be the Exchange TRX, Tun Raza Exchange. So, about the GEO building, this building, so it is owned by the Green Tech, currently uh, uh, owned by them. So, if we look at into the components of the, the green building, uh, so it is uh, include low electricity demand design and also building integrated photovoltaic BIPV. Uh, so the, 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 the solution, uh, it is user comfort and also health and safety. So this is output of the design by the way. So if we look at into building design ideas, so uh, the buildings, uh, the way they compose the building the way they locate the building it is uh, by the analysis of the how the sun sunrise and and also the sunset so it is uh, designed and located uh, strategically uh, by the data of the Malaysia sun path in Kuala Lumpur so the design also uh, reflects the exterior and also interior which is uh, the exterior that is a few landscape and also in interior design using uh, atrium and also the features which is uh, eco-friendly so there is also roof light skylight radiant cooling air conditioning system if efficient asu with variable speed drive inverter optimum orientation with windows and doors face toward north and south self shading designed to prevent glare while maximizing daylight usage Double glazing windows with integrated blinds, daylight windows and reflective mirror. 100% daylight during normal days, diffuse daylight is reflected inside. Mirror light shaft is used to enable diffuse daylight to go deeper into the building. Floor slab cooling, PEX pipes in floor slab with chill, water flowing during daytime. Insulate interior from external heat using mineral wool, foam and Orated concrete block. Alright, so if you look at the photos, we can see uh, the building uh, at the rooftop using the photovoltaic panel, and inside the building also we can see there is atrium where uh, the material here it is a photovoltaic panel, which is solar panel, and also at the at the at the main uh, facade area they are using uh, solar panel as well to receive uh, sunlight. Yeah, and also they are using double glazing windows. So this is the interior for the building. So if you look at, at the interior, there is atrium. Uh, so natural light can just go into the buildings. So it is called as diffuse daylight emitted through the skylight here. So this is the skylight where this is the PV panel. Alright, so... This is the way how the diffuse light go into the building uh, at the use, I mean by the window. Yeah. So there is big window as well uh, for the building. And most of the material uh, used in the building they are eco friendly. The second example for zero energy architecture or green building it is the town raza exchange trx at kuala lumpur so the components 
For the zero energy architecture, it is sustainable construction, incorporating biophilia and also green features and modern technology. The CHORX development has been awarded leadership in energy and environmental design, LEED, go under LEED for neighborhood development stage to LEED V for writing system. So the definition for biophilia here is, I mean, the building using uh, the greenery and also plants in their design for the buildings. So there's more plant, no? more greenery uh, that reflects the design of the building. So, and also here, uh, most of the features of the building, they are using uh, digital technology as well. No? Like uh, the touch screen, uh, energy, building energy management and so on. So the exchange TRX sustainability plan responds to the dynamic local community agenda and Kuala Lumpur city ambitions, the LCT plan 2020. The principles set out in the United Nations Compact of which land lease is a signatory. This, the building sustainability plan also contributes to the United Nations Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which is covered 10 out of 17, 70s goals at the building. Yeah, so meaning that the building covers 10 agenda of SDGs. So it is really good, by the way. So about the GBR rating, rating tools, and they got gold for this uh, building, for this planning. So the building category, it is non-residential new construction, NRNC. Yeah. So it, it, it is a really big planning for the area and also for the building as well. Yeah, it, it, if you look at here, no? very nice, the interior using the plants and also greenery at the buildings. Here a few more uh, images uh, of the buildings, uh, some of the artist render and some uh, a reality photo that's taken by other authors and also owned by others which is I include in this uh, slide today. Yeah. Alright, so we go for point two point two options for alternative energy in Malaysia. Alternative energy sources in Malaysia included hydro and marine, bioenergy, solar power, wind and geothermal. According to the data reviews, hydro and marine power are the most commonly used renewable energy sources in Malaysia and solar power is becoming more prominent. Barriers of deployment of an alternative energy three main barriers in order to deploy renewable energy in Malaysia which is issue for approval process and land, land access, financing and feed store availability for power generation, mainly for biomass products. So, so if you look at also electric city generation 2020 at figure 5, so non-renewable, it is 147,077, 47, which is 84% of Total electric city generation in Malaysia, renewable, just 60%, which is 28,970, sorry, 18%, it's, it's, sorry, 18 gig, gigawatts. And hydro and marine, which is 25,906 gigawatt, which is only 15% of total electric city generation. Bioenergy 1%, also solar, it is 471 gigawatt and wind 0 gigawatt. So, geometro, geometro, also 0 gigawatt. So, the data I got from International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA 2021. Alright, next, uh, I will discuss into digital, digitalization and construction in Malaysia. So, today it is essential that company procedures are transparent and by embracing digitalization, this may be greatly enhanced. Information on behavior, usage, failure models, performance indicators, emissions and performance under stress is provided by digital technology. Such data analysis can then be formalized and used to create plans for both competition and sustainability. So, this is quoted by Frost and Sullivan 2021. The operation and maintenance of such buildings will heavily rely on artificial intelligence AI which is will be used in smart methods, smart display boards that advise renters on how to cut energy uses, use, lighting control versus shading and air conditioning operation. So this is stated by Shahadi 2020. The most important advantage of digitalization in sector 
include time savings in the delivery of building projects, increase productivity, faster work speeds, higher quality documents, quicker reaction times, and easier working procedures. So, developing the essential digitalization of the energy system requires a governance solution which may be achieved by doing the following. A domestic investment strategic fund, the ISF, government to provide grants to accelerate the shift to high-value aided high technology, knowledge-intensive and innovation-based industries. The Malaysian government's economic recovery plan, which is Panjana, introduced in June 2020, announced the establishment of the National Technology and Innovation Sandbox, NTIS, to drive silent development. The government is specifically focusing on digital transformation in the industry. So this is also stated by Pros and Sullivan 2021. So there is four components in the digital technology for enabling circular construction, which is, which is which are digital models and platforms, AI and big data, blockchain, technology and IoT, Internet of Things, and also digital manufacturing. Next, we move on into discussion for the topic today. The data analysis was summarized by the researchers as follows, energy crisis. From the data, Malaysia currently in the phase of transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy power as it has been predicted that conventional fuels will be depleted in 70 years but targeted the world energy also could deplete in 30 years. In order to make Malaysia nationally determined contribution and basis which were ratified during the Paris Agreement on the only 10% of Malaysia total energy consumption is currently made up the use of deployment and redeployment of renewable and alternative energy sources. In the aspect of alternative energy sources in Malaysia, alternative energy sources in Malaysia included hydro and marine, bioenergy, solar power, wind and geothermal according to the data reviews. Hydro and marine power are the most commonly used renewable energy sources in Malaysia and solar power is becoming more and more prominent. So the barriers of deployment of alternative energy, three main barriers in order to deploy renewable energy in Malaysia, which is issue of approval process and land access financing, store availability for power generation, mainly for biomass projects. So energy efficient buildings refers to building has the potential to positive impact on the climate as well as the environment throughout its design construction or operation which is classified as zero energy building that will be and to include ISO 50001 energy management. The elements of EEB such as reduced energy consumption, reduced solar heat gain capturing natural light using renewable energy sources and ensuring adequate adequate testing and maintenance. So in the aspect of digitalization construction in Malaysia, adopting digitalization could considerably consider improve the built environment. Digital technologies provide data on behavior, usage, failure models, performance indicators, emissions, and performance under stress. Currently, the Malaysia government is actively working on national and community-specific digitalization strategy, plan, and program. So, at last, in the aspect of government policy, there are several government policy concerning alternative energy in Malaysia such as National Building Energy Intensity BEI and Malaysia, Malaysia's Future Energy Landscape 2050 by Suruhanjaya Tenaga, Malaysia Energy Emissions Budget 21 and Budget 22 about the sustainability agenda by Ministry of Malaysia, Mac Finance Malaysia, the Voluntary Carbon Market or VSM by Bursa Malaysia, Green Investment Tax, GITA, Smart Automation Grants, SAG, SEDAS, Net Energy Metering 3.0 and EM 3.0 and Malaysia Renewable Energy Roadmap 2035, my RER. We go for conclusion of the zero energy architecture. Uh, so there is core components for the building which is uh, maximize energy efficiency, prioritize on-site renewables, utilize off-site renewables, and also measure and manage net zero operation. So additional components, it is included electrification, ready and minimize eliminates on-site for safe fuels, optimize building grid integration and on-site storage, specify low GWP refrigerants, and also consider low embodied carbon materials. So 
So if you look at this figure, so this is on site renewables. Yeah, so recommended to use on site renewable. I mean, in Malaysia, it is uh, in trend using solar panel and also using other renewable energy sources, which is community solar and also community wind turbines. So using high performance building envelopes, so usually used for the column and also for the wall, high performance windows. So you use glass and other building material, which is eco friendly, building home. Controls as well, so this is more like smart system at the building. Efficient heat pump, uh, HVAC for the air conditioning, and also efficient electric water heater, effic efficient electric appliances and lighting, and also on site storage. So this is referred to the electric city storage, electricity storage. For the conclusion of the topic today, by integrating an effective building envelope and deploying energy efficient and high performance utilities that encourage power levels of energy consumption, future buildings will place a greater emphasis on renewable and sustainable energy resources. The ecology and the economy can, bo can both benefit greatly from net zero buildings in the end. Alternatively, digital technology boosts output while reducing risks, it enhances teamwork, worker safety and design accuracy in the construction sector, offering building industry and industry a competitive age. So that's all for today. Thank you. But if you guys uh, has any uh, any uh, anything to ask regarding the topic, you still could reach me through my email. Thank you.